Before we get into the video, I just want to remind you to click the subscribe button. Once we get to 1,000 subscribers here on the Scotty C93 channel, we will be doing a 1,000 PED giveaway. But wait, it gets better. If we can hit 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year, I'm going to do a giveaway of 1,500 PED. But wait, it gets just that a little bit more juicy. If we can get to 1,000 subscribers by May 3rd, which just so happens to be my birthday, and around about the time when my son will be born, I'll be giving away 2,000 PED. Just to see if you guys, the, the, the community, can actually get me there. Let's see what we can do, guys. On to the video. Hello lads and ladettes, how are we doing today? I hope you guys are having a fine day here in Entropia. Now, as you can see, I am starting a new player guide. I did one, well I started one early last year, I think, or the year before. But I feel I have grown, I have a little bit more knowledge to share. So I'm going to be doing a 2021 edition of my new player guide. New information, a little bit more comprehensive as well. So, this first one, and I am going off of the idea that you already know how to hunt. Physically, know how to hunt in-game. You can get the gun, you can go to a mob and shoot it. And you also know how to mine and maybe do some basic crafting. Okay? I am going to explain the extra stuff. Alright, so I'm going to explain how you make money crafting, mining, and hunting, at least in the basic sense of the terms. But first, I'm going to explain the passive ways or the ways of making PED that don't cost you anything, okay? And this is very important because you should understand how to do these things, whether or not you're a free-to-play player. Actually, if you're a free-to-play player, you should know how to do these things, and you should understand comprehensively how and why you should be doing these things. And you should also, uh, and even if you're a player that deposits, i.e. goes to the web store or to the exchange thing, and you get money into the game, even if you do that, you should understand and know how to do these things. Now remember, this is for new players. This is not for people that have been here for, you know, more than five or six months. This is someone who is either coming back to just look at my opinion as to what I have to say, or you're a new player and you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I get by in the world of Entropia? How do I get by on Planet Calypso? We're going to be getting into that right now. We're going to start with the ways to earn PED without spending any PED, okay? And there's two ways to do this. Exploration and sweating. The reason why I say exploration is because while you're doing this specific thing, you're going to be getting a few things that are invaluable in-game, right? So, the first thing, while you're exploring, while you're on this excellent adventure, you're going to be finding new mobs. So you're going to be finding new monsters that you could potentially hunt. You're going to be finding... Uh, fruit and stone and dung and you're also going to be finding new towns shops teleports all that sort of stuff so exploration is one of the main ways in my opinion to earn ped without spending any anything apart from time everything in this game costs time but quite a bit of it costs time and money. Now, the way you explore is you just start walking in a direction. Look at your map and be like, hmm, you know what, there's a weird structure here, I'm gonna walk to there. And then you start running. And you start running. And now, every so often, while you're running, now it used to be only when you're walking, but these days it's also while you're running. While you're running, you're gonna be finding various fruits and stuff, so right now I have some carrot in my inventory. You're going to find that, you're going to find stones, and you're going to find dung. Now most of this stuff will just pop up out of nowhere, and it will look out of place. So make sure when you're running around, you're paying attention to your surroundings. 
when something pops up that just looks out of place or looks interesting if you don't know what it is put your cursor over it to see if hey there this is a thing it's highlighting and i can pick it up do that okay the second way you can earn uh PED in game is sweating sweating is an interesting one these days right and i do prefer fruit finding over sweating but you can mitigate some of the annoyances that come with sweating okay so sweat is a pain in the ass to sell okay it is a pain in the ass to sell you could sit on and i know a few people that are sitting on you know a hundred thousand bottles of sweat and they're not able to sell it because either people aren't buying or they're trying to sell it for a little bit more than one PED. Right now, the going price for 1,000 bottles of sweat is about one PED. Okay. Fruit tends to sell more for around two PED. However, I'm going to explain how you could do either one of these things and not need to worry about selling in person right now you can sit on a stack of stuff then go into the trade the trade chat and say you know selling uh fruit thousand stack two ped or i'm selling uh sweat you know one ped per k but and here's the but instead of doing that just take advantage of the auction house you don't want to waste time trying to uh, sell to other players. You don't want to, you don't want to waste time. So here's what you can do. The fruit you can sell in the auction house, and right now it's selling for quite nice per month. It's selling for uh, fifty two. Yeah, fifty two thousand percent markup for the week. It's about. 40,000% markup. Now, what that means is I can come into the auction house, go to sell, throw this in there, and I could sell it for 1 PED, I could sell it for 2 PED, I could sell it for 3 PED, I could sell it for 4 PED, but I think, just so it sells a little bit quicker, I'm going to be selling it for 3 PED, which is at least 10,000% less than everything else right should be so i'm going to put that in there and see it says opening bid is below nine percent ninety percent of monthly market value i'm fine with that i just want to sell it okay and when once that sells that will be an extra two and a bit ped because you got to remember you got to take into account the auction fees right so this is why you got to make you got to think about it okay so you've got fruit and you've got sweat the fruit you could sell in the auction house and you know it's it's relatively okay to sell or you can sell it to other players um, in the trade chat if you sell it in the trade chat just remember there is a chance that you will not sell anything for a good amount of time if you sell it on the auction house you can at least put it up there and leave it if you don't if it doesn't sell it doesn't sell but if it does sell at least you haven't been sitting there for days and days and days trying to sell stuff now here's the other thing that you can do sweat sweat by itself has no market value you cannot sell it on the auction house however if you use a refiner you can then grab the sweat and throw it into the refiner to make vibrant sweat crates now just so you have an understanding of how much it will cost to refine this is like 28 pec worth of sweat approximately so let's just refine it into the vibrant sweat crate and it costs six pec to refine okay so these are the things that you've got to keep in mind that it takes stuff to refine you know but this has a 
market value, and sells very well, mind you. You got to remember, one thousand um, uh, crates of vibrant sweat. It's only one PEC. So you have people selling at least six hundred thousand crates, like six hundred thousand crates, in this month, in this week. It has been 1,650 so far sold. So what you can do, and it seems to be very consistent, which is the, uh, we'll go 1,000, uh, we'll, we'll go with like 15,000% markup, right? So 15,000% markup, we will need to try to sell this for uh, 1.5 PED. Now, the problem is, you cannot do in PEC. It's only in PED. So it goes up to something like this. What we can do, though, is throw a little bit extra on. And all of a sudden, ooh, it's a little bit more. So we can sell it for that little bit extra. Now, here's where you need to keep in mind the auction fee. Okay, so the auction fee for going up 1 PED seems to be like 5 PEC. So what you can do is you can sweat 12,000 now let's just uh, split this into you can get 12,000 and bump it up right 12,000 um, yeah 12,000 bowls of sweat you refine it into vibrant sweat crates you put it on the auction house and you sell it for 20 PED okay and it will come out to about this. It will come out to where they like to buy it. Of course, you could sell it for 15 or you could sell it for 16. It really depends on how much did it cost to refine, how much do I need to put, how much do I need to sell it on the auction house. So, in my opinion, you should not worry about needing to sell this to another player, i.e. waiting in trade and selling it. Change it into a vibrant sweat crate throw it in the auction house, walk away. In my opinion, that's the best way to do it. So now that we have the boring shit out of the way, let's talk about the cool shit, i.e. how do I make money hunting? And I will get into that as soon as I get to the area that I'm going to be hunting at. Alright, lads and loadouts, we have made it to where I'm going to be demonstrating the main way to make PED while hunting. Now, where we are, is we are in the northern swamp camp. We are just north of Port Atlantis. You got Camp Icarus here, that's where you're going to start. So if you're a very new player and you're still in Camp Icarus, this is where you are. Open up your map and just figure out where I am and you will be able to find the northern, the north swamp camp. Now this is the place where you're going to get, like basically they're going to teach you, oh this is how you sweat and they're going to get you into here to hunt uh, I think it was like Elofills or Asylfill, nor like basically trash tier stuff. But if you're sweating, you can sweat those guys, no problem. Now, the main way you're going to be making PED is by something called markup. You would have seen it before when we were putting stuff on the auction house. Remember, when you put something on the auction house, you want to get it to around the markup area, okay? So I'm going to be demonstrating how you could potentially make money while hunting, okay? This is going to be the potential thing. There is going to be, it's 80% knowledge, 20% luck. In my personal opinion, it will be 80% knowledge, 20% luck. If you mix that shit together, then you're going to get stuff. First thing, when you're hunting, and you would have already noticed this, every so often, when you kill a mob... When you kill a monster, you're going to get either less, about on par, or significantly more than it cost to, uh, to kill. Okay? So keep that in mind when we're uh, looking at this, because there's going to be a few main key things to keep in mind when looking to earn money hunting. That is, how much PED are you cycling? What loot are you getting back? Are you just getting back shrapnel? Are you just getting back animal oil? Or are you getting back tier 2 or tier 1 component? 
uh, components or are you getting back orange paint? Are you getting back specific items that give markup, good markup? Okay. Or are you just getting animal oil, which has a markup of like 1.2? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 30 PED. Now, I won't be filming this because there's no point in filming this. You know how to hunt. I'm going to be using 30 PED and probably just my Justifier Mark II. For reference and understanding, the Justifier Mark II has an efficiency of 55.4. Okay? Has an efficiency of 55.4. It is an unlimited weapon, but the hit ability and critical hit ability is less. I could use my Barbarella. Which has a little bit more efficiency and everything is maxed out. I will see which one works better and I'll let you know. But for now, all you need to know is I'm going to be spending 30 PED worth of ammunition. And hunting Exosaurs up at the North Swamp Camp. And I will get back to you once I'm finished. Alright, so I have finished that 30 PED hunt. And I will say that it actually went a lot better than I thought it would. I got very lucky in this one. I uh, made back what I put in, like, in ammo-wise, just from the shrapnel and the animal muscle oil. So this is why hunting, it is a blend of knowledge, but it is also a blend of luck. It could be 50-50, I'm not sure. I think 80% of it is knowledge, because you need to know what drops what, ladies and gents. You gotta, you gotta get out there, you gotta do either some research online, or you gotta do some expeditions and... Shoot the shit out of things. Now, here is how you make PEDs hunting, ladies and gentlemen. It is by finding a mob that gives a common, like, gives certain items very commonly, but they're ridiculously high in market value. Now, we're going to take, uh, let's have a quick look at, say, Inferior Cloth Extractor. Now, I didn't get a lot of inferior, inferior Cloth Extractor. But that is okay. If we look at this, per month, it sold 634 PED. Or, ju you know, just under 635. For 340, just under 44% uh, markup. Which means that this is not worth 9 PEC. It is worth around 27 PEC. So about three times as much. Now let's look at uh, Animal Hide. Animal Hide has, it's good, like if you see these huge spikes, it's good to look at the year. Now not only does it sell a decent amount per month, but it sells for around 115% per sale, which is nice. It is nice. So if you have about 100 PED worth of this, you could sell it for around 110, 115 PED. Which is always a plus. Now this is why I chose Exosaurs specifically. So you new players can understand. Uh, just why hunting these guys are very important. Blazar Fragments. See Blazar Fragments. They are. How would you say. Ridiculous. Okay. One. They are very important in tier upgrades. And two. They sell for a lot. Now if we look at. Let's go for the year, right? If you get a thousand Blazar Fragments, you can sell it for around 16 PED on the auction house. And they sell quite a bit. They sell a lot. Now right here I have 29. Right, I have 29, so... Oh, open it up. Information. I have 20, 29, so this currently sits at 0.2 PEC, okay? 0.2 PEC. So there is the potential for me to be able to sell just this piddly amount for what? 20 PEC if I wanted? Something like that. But, ladies and gentlemen, you, you, you save that stuff up. You get that thousand. You sell it in the auction house. You get that money. Okay? Let's look at a couple of these other ones. Diluted Sweat. About 105... If you look at this, this is uh, garbage. If we look at this, this is also garbage. 
So there's going to be certain things that are going to be straight up TT food. You throw them into the trade terminal, and whatever you get back from that, just spend it on ammunition. Do not sell shrapnel. Shrapnel, when converted, it converts for 101%. So if you have 100 PED worth, you can turn it into 101 PED worth of ammunition. Okay, so there's already that good markup when it comes to that but you pick the right thing you hunt the right thing and after a while you cycle through this shrapnel so i'll get another you know i'll get another 17 to 18 ped worth of shoot time which gives me even more chances to get things like blazar fragments but i might get lucky and get some more animal muscle oil now animal muscle oil doesn't sell for that much but it sh sells a shitload so if you get 100 PED you could sell it for 102 that extra 2 PED might not seem like much but it can go a long way but yes the way you hunt is by hunting markup you hunt for markup okay whether you're looking for paint cans whether you're looking for tiering components right whether you're looking for Various types of skin and wool and hide. Various type of extractors. Hunt for markup. Hunt a mob for a little while. Look at the uh, the look at the loot that they gave you. And look at the markup. If the markup on all of them is like 101 to 103, I wouldn't bother hunting that mob. But if you have, if say half of that is 110% or higher. And especially if it's like something like orange paint cans, which is like three, four hundred percent, then you want to stick with that mob. Now, this is why it comes down to luck. I came back with, let's have a look. I came back with just under 30, well, like just over 34 PED. So I can say that I made a profit just in trade terminal value. But that was straight up luck. Most of the time you're going to come back with probably a 10 to 20% loss. But thanks to globals and things like that, you can make that back. And that's why it is also down to luck. If you get a global, then your losses are null and void. There are other ways to make your losses null and void, such as getting things like land deeds which uh, can give you passive income each week. Like Calypso gives like th three and a half PED. Arcadia Underground or Arcadia Deeds give, you know, a few P PECs per day. So you can also get Deeds, but I'm going to go into that in a later video. Now the same rule applies for when you're mining. When you're mining, you're going to find different ores and end matter with different uh different market value right now you do not want to go off of the raw market value you want to go off of the refined market value so let's look at the blouse uh splosarium in uh, stone 104 percent but if we look at the ingot oh it's about the same that's weird that's different see i wasn't expecting that what about iron? Oh wait, no. It's not the markup, it's the amount that tends to sell. A lot of people aren't going to really buy that much of the raw materials. If they're crafting, they're going to try to get the refined materials. So let's have a look at some of these more common stuff that you can get. Iron, for example. Iron has a markup of 103. And sells very well. Copper has a markup of 112. It sells quite a bit. The Sterium has a markup of 103, sells a shitload. Melchi Crystal, 103, 104, sells for sells a shitload. Garcing Lubricant, 137% and sells for a decent amount. Corombits. 
109 to 110 sells a lot. So what you want to do is when you find a specific, when you find an ore, refine it first, refine it, look at the market value. And if that's something that you want to chase after, mark down, you can come up to here, you go to this little create new message, right? So sticky note. And let's say I wanted to just uh, know my, you know, whatever location. Let's, uh, let's, come on, let's just mark this down. So you create a waypoint wherever you are, copy waypoint link, paste it in there. And then you can say, go, uh, dope ore, right? So you put that in there and then you can just minimize it and it will stay in there, right? So of course you can put the dope, you can open it up and then if I was to say remove waypoint, I can then click on this and it will just show up in here. So if you're mining and you come across a high market value uh, uh, item, go over where you are, create the waypoint, copy it into a notepad and then remember that maybe go back to it every day give it a drop see if you get that back and test it out okay test it out see what works for you crafting crafting is a little bit different okay i'll go back to a crafting terminal and i'll demonstrate why it can be difficult before i demonstrate the crafting stuff though i just wanted to point out that different fruits and different stones they'll sell differently on the auction house so you have this stone so has sold like 10 pack at you know 33,000 percent so that's not bad this one two pack at 40,000 percent but that's for the week nice it Sells for just under 20,000%. Caldeon. 13,000. Now, this is the interesting thing with the fruit. Now, the Karut, over the week, has sold 1 PEC. Okay? 1 PEC worth of uh, Karut has sold for 40,000. Let's look at Hyamos. Has sold 10 PEC over today for 26,000, uh, yeah, 26,000 percent. Bombardo has sold, let's look at this, uh, has sold uh, 8.5 PEC over the space of the week for 556, though I think that's a little bit of a wrong. But either way, has sold quite a bit. And Pap, uh, Papillon has sold 10 PEC for 352,000% markup. Okay, that's a, that's a good thing to keep in mind. So, Papillon has sold for a lot. I'm going to uh, just do a thing. I won't be a moment. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, the construction machine. Now, the third thing in Entropy Universe that you can do to create, like to make PED, is crafting. Now, this is where it gets a little bit bothersome and funky, okay? Construction is very much a luck thing. Because if we go to success rate, right? 88% success rate. Now, the maximum amount of success rate you can get up to is 95%. Now, 95% success rate does not mean that 95% of what you get, like of crafting attempts, are going to be successful. That success rate percentage is a blend of success and near success. They get you a little bit with that, okay? They get you a little bit with that, but don't worry. Don't worry about it too much, because where the crafting where you're going to make money crafting eventually now this is a long long ass time will obviously be either luck or by making weapons 
Now, if we're just if we go to we're just going to category weapons. Now, where is now? I have an LP ten blueprint, right? Now you can make a lot of these basic sheets, centers, filters. You get the cobalt and got metal rods, nano cubes. You can uh, find the acid root, like root acid, I think. Simple conductors. Now all of these things you can either find, like uh, mining or hunting, or you can craft them. Okay. If you get off the auction house, they're going to cost you markup, right? So let's see. Basic filters, 105. Basic centers, sensors. 134, basic sheet, 123, cobalt, 107, look at the month, 121 for metal rods, nano cubes, you get that from the trade terminal, root acid, 102, simple conductor, 107%. Now, if you look at how much the this sells for, this sells for 115% on average, okay? So it's for 115% on average. Now, as you can see, a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff has a higher markup. However, a lot of the cost per click value doesn't come from things like the basic filters, which is four, yeah, like four PEC. You got basic sensors, which are would be about 10 PC metal sheet which will be maybe 12 PC your cobalt ingot right Co the cobalt ingot is 60 PC but you only need one metal rods 35 you need three of those so that will come out to around one uh, one point zero like one one around one PED. Now nano cubes, you get them from the trade terminal, and that's going to come out at uh, one ped twenty two. The root acid sixty four. Simple conductor thirty. Now the higher markup stuff you can make. Well, it's very easy to make that stuff, right? So if you go out and you mine, and you're able to mine up most of the high markup. Uh, the ingredients to make the high markup materials, you could potentially save on that markup, and then you could sell. But this is where it becomes a little bit more difficult. If you want this at full TT value, you either need to go all the way to uh, what's called condition, and hope that mo like hope that a good amount of these attempts are perfect you know full successes or you use uh do i have any handy you could basically use construction residue what i'll do is i'll just quickly do a couple of construction attempts on just a couple of components that way i can just demonstrate the one the success near success and all that sort of stuff so I'm just going to go quantity and we'll go 10. So you'll, it takes a while. So this is the sort of thing where you can set going and then you can get up and walk away. And you can see up the top, I'll be getting things back. See, near success, success, success. But the near success is classed as just a lower success thing, right? So let's see. Oh, we got a basic bearings blueprint. These you could sell for like one PED. Now the 49, that, it's, no. That is something that would have a quality rating of 100, not a quality rating of one. Now, did we get any? No. So what we'll do is we'll construct another 10. This might take a little bit, so I'll pause and then unpause. Okay, so, right here you have crafting residues, right? You have just miscellaneous stuff, right? And if you look at the information, 
Metal re residue is a waste material coming from manufacturing process. However, these residues can be used to increase the TT value of other things. So let's take this Jester D1 blueprint, for instance. Now, if I was to do this right now, it would come out around the uh, value of two Belkar, two Iron, and one Melchi. This has a markup of just under one PED. So this isn't worth crafting, in my opinion, unless you're using it to... I don't know. Search for other blueprints, because as you saw, when you craft, you get other blueprints. So, when you're crafting, you'll get other blueprints. If you're crafting weapons, you'll get weapon blueprints, which some of the le uh, some of the limited ones do have some okay markup. So, keep that in mind. But if I was to say go use residue, I can click on this, and likewise, I can click stop when residue is depleted. So, let's say I. Why not? Say I want to, uh, seven attempts at crafting this, but I want it to stop when the metal residue is done. Near success, it'll add to the metal residue. Near success. Fail. Come on, get a success, just for me. Success. Construction attempts stop due to lack of residue. So, now, all my residue has been used, and the TT value of that residue has been put into my Jester D1. Of course, there's no point using that on an unlimited weapon, because if you were to sell this, you could literally just repair it and then sell it. Very, very easy. Now, the trick when it comes to making money in crafting is you want to, one, be lucky enough to get enough successful attempts. Two, you want to find something that you're crafting that people want. So it could be a weapon that sells a lot per day or per week. And you want to find or have the materials for cheap. Now, a lot of the um, like residue and stuff, you will get that while crafting things like basic filters and sensors and all that sort of stuff. So, you would want to blend mining with crafting. Or, try to buy these things in bulk. Now, buying things in bulk could be uh, very... Ah, uh, is very costly up front. So let's go, um, Cobalt Ingot, right? That was a very poor example because there's not enough crumbits. No, let's go... Listerium. So if we look at the large buyouts so the higher markup stuff they're in lower quantities the lowest buyout markup will have ridiculously high quantities but they cost a lot so in my opinion it is better to mine them so mine the materials create the components and then create whatever it is that you want to create of course certain things will just need the stuff, you know, like Melchi, Crumbits, and Listerium. All three very common things to find. So that is going to be it for today's video, guys. It has been long. It has been quite pleasant to make, actually. I like making these sorts of things. So there we have it. Let's recap. Fruit. Sell on the auction house. Sweat. I would change it into sweat crates and sell it on the auction house. When hunting, hunt something that gives a good amount of high 
mark up loot. When mining, when you find a an ore that has a good markup, right, so create a waypoint, copy it, and put it into the sticky notes. Okay, put it into the sticky notes. If you do that, then it'll all be good. Crafting. Find whatever way to minimize the upfront cost of an item you are creating. If you can do that, then you'll be pretty much guaranteed uh, success in the future. Now, all of these things take time. They take time, they take energy, they take PED, unless you're getting fruit. So keep in mind, this is how you make PED, but... It does take time and effort. The only surefire way to make PED for no cost is of course to sweat and fruit find. Everything else costs PED. So you need that little bit of luck. You need that skill. You need that know-how. I hope you guys have had a fantastic day. That's going to be it for me for today. Leave a comment below and go to the comment section because there is a fair chance that there's going to be other players in this community, in my community here on YouTube, that have um, a second way of doing things, another way of looking at things. So they'll have a different opinion and they might have different uh, ideas of how to do things. Now, these are just all my opinions based on what I've seen, what I've done, experienced and what I've seen other people do. Do not take this as gospel. But, this is my guide on how to make PED. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.